Good evening. This is I'm Pearly, Arthur Pearlie Martin, and I dropped in today um, because I'm going to be doing a teaching series on my book, Understanding Your Own Issues and Other Issues. We're, um, we're going to start today in Chapter 1. I'm going to get right into the book. So, hey, wait right there. I'll be right back with you. Hi, this is Arthur Pearlie Martin. And our first chapter, we're going to be teaching on a series, but we're going to start with my first chapter of the book. Um, and what is speaking in the um, the first chapter of the book is called The Blame Game. The Blame Game. And my question to you would be, are you playing the blame game? Do you blame others for your actions and reactions? This is... If we're really honest about being um, delivered and set free, this series will be the series that can do it for you. So here we're going to read a little bit from the blame game. It says, are you playing the blame game? Is it always someone else's fault? Um, is your favorite excuse in life is they, they made me do it? Or are you able to take responsibilities for your own actions and your own reactions? If you answer yes to this question, then you're playing a blame game. I think one of the things that we fail to realize the most is that when we blame other people for our actions and reactions, it's really a statement of weakness because what we're really saying is they made me do it. And to be able to say someone make you do anything, that's too much power. <laughs> because really what we're saying is, is that that person has control over my will. Now, we know that no one has control over our will unless someone is demon-possessed, right? So we get to make our own choices in life. Um, the, playing the blame game, it causes us not to see ourselves. It causes us not to see our own thoughts. It causes us to look at others and blame them uh, instead of being able to take responsibility for our own actions and reactions. Um, the Bible tells us to confess that the fervent prayer of a righteous man or a woman availed much and for us to confess our own thoughts one to another so that we can be healed and not the thoughts of others. Conf telling people about what my husband did or what someone else did is not going to set me free. Remember Jesus told his disciples in John, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So what is it that the truth sets us free from? The truth, God's truth sets us free from a lie. In any area in our lives where we're believing a lie, when truth comes, it's like the light. Truth is light. And when the light comes, it expels the darkness. If you walk into a dark room and you turn on the light, what happens? Immediately, the darkness has to go because light, brain, it's been, everything's been brought to light. So in the blame game, I like to say that Eve, uh, Adam blamed Eve and Eve blamed, Ad, um, and Eve blamed the serpent, right? Really, in a way, Adam blamed Eve and God because Adam said, God, it's this woman that you gave me. She did make me eat, right? But And then Eve said, it was a serpent that you, it was a serpent. He, he deceived me. That's why I ate, right? So no one really took the responsibilities of their own actions and reactions, you see? So until we're willing to admit it, we're not going to quit it. We have to own our own issues. We have to be a, um, able to admit our own thoughts. Um, so we can be delivered and set free from whatever it is that's holding us hostage because we have to admit it before we can quit it. Until I can see, until we can see that something is wrong, we're never going to see the need to change. So my question to you today is, I'm going to leave you with this short insert. And I want you to look at yourself and say, Lord, show me me. You know, we say a lot of times, Lord, create in me a clean heart, renew in me a right spirit. Well, if you're sincere about that prayer, I promise you, this book, Understanding Your Own Issues, my book, this book will set you free and deliver. it will deliver you and set you free. This is my true life story. These these are things that I really, really had to encounter. Um, these are things I really had to uh, overcome. The Lord taught me how to forgive. He taught me, you know, a lot of times we tell people, you need to forgive, you need to forgive. And this is true. This is what the word says. But a lot of times we don't tell people how to forgive. So how do we forgive? We're going to learn it later in these lessons, sessions, and this is from my book as we continue on 
uh, in the study lesson. How do we overcome offense? You know, people be like, oh, just get over it. it but it's not that easy, right? Because it, it hurts our heart and our soul. So how do we move past the past? How do we guard our heart? We're going to learn it in uh, in the coming episodes. But today, we're just going to talk about the blame game, about us being able to see ourselves. Let's practice on this. We're going to exercise this. Um, like I say, if you had a part to play in whatever happened, just say you're sorry and move on. God forgives us. What we do is not who we are. That's one of the main reasons why it's so hard for us sometimes to say we're sorry because we equate what we do as being who we are. What you do is not who you are. What we do is not who we are, but it's an action and a reaction in which we allow our flesh to do. Okay, so there's no condemnation. Let's ask God for forgiveness. Ask that person for forgiveness. Yes, I said it. Yes, I did it. Yes, I yield my members and I let the devil use me. And I'm ready to move on from this place because that's pride. How many of you know that pride is a thing that keeps us from being able to say we're sorry? The pride is a thing that keeps us from being able to admit when we're wrong. Well, I have news for you. We have to be able to admit it before we can quit it. Can you admit it? Will you confess it? Do you want to be set free? If you're serious about it, stick with my study guide. Stick with me. Go through the journey with me. And I promise you, at the end, you will be delivered and set free. But today exercise, I'm going to leave us with this. Um, my book was written off of the Lord gave me Proverbs 4, 23. There were some struggles and some issues in my life that I was going through and I was dealing with these issues. I was dealing with offenses. I was dealing with unforgiveness. I didn't know how to do it. I know I needed to do it, but I didn't know how to do it. And for me, I need I, I, my cry to the Lord is, Lord, give me a word from your word. Lord, give me a word from your word. Why is this? Because he's already said that when we know the truth, the truth sets us free. So I needed a word from God's word so I could be free, right? And so that's just what he did. He gave me a word from his word that delivered me and set me free, which was Proverbs 4 and 23, which states in the um, New Living Translation, guard your heart for out of it flows everything that you do. I like to tell people that the issues that are in our lives is coming from what's inside, right? Because he said, guard your heart for out of it flows everything that what that you do. So we must guard our heart, not letting perverse speech come out from among us. You know, watch what the words that we say, watch our eye gate, our ear gate, the things that we're listening to, the people we're hanging around with. We need to guard our heart. So guard your heart because those issues that are in your life is really coming <laughs> from what's inside. And later on, we're going to discuss how the Lord showed me that part of it, how what they were saying and doing had nothing to do with me because in this case, I really was innocent. I hadn't did anything to the people, really didn't even know them. Um, and so the things that they were saying and uh, the lies that they were making up about me and the things that they were saying was not because of me, but it was because of them. It was what was inside of them that was coming out of them. And so I learned how not to take on the offense. I learned how not to take their issues and make them about me. You want to learn that? If so, come go, come along and go to journey with me. But the first thing, today's exercise, I want to leave us with, and I want us to study on this. Um, I want you to sit down and meditate and, that, and say, Lord, show me me, creating me a clean heart, renewing me a right spirit. Um, let them see your issues because the Bible says we must take the plank out of our own eye before we can see the splinter in our brother's eye, right? So let the Lord show you what the plank is in your own eye. So we can clearly be able to see ourselves no condemnation so we can repent of those areas in our lives where the devil is holding us hostage because the greatest uh, deception is self-deception. And as long as the devil can lead us to believe that there's nothing wrong with us, that we we don't have any and, and we don't in Christ, we're, we're perfect. Our spirit is just fine. Um, but God, uh, sent, tell, you know, he wants us to uh, be free of pride. He wants us to be able to submit ourselves unto him so we can resist the devil and he will flee and not being able to say that we're sorry and not being able to see ourselves as self-deception not being able to say that we're sorry is pride in itself so when we finish this i'm almost finished here we're going to just do short segments when we finish um today once again i want to our study for today is 
find out those issues that are in your life. If you offended someone, I, I challenge you today to call that person and say, I'm sorry. And if they, or in, in the case where you haven't offended anyone and maybe they offended you, I want you to forgive them. Like Jesus said, to forgive them by understanding and realizing that what they, well, what they said or did to you was what was coming out of uh, inside of them. It wasn't even about you. They're letting you see, they're giving you a glimpse of how they're feeling on the inside. And I'm going to end it with this short question here. If you cannot forgive them for what they said or did to you, can you at least forgive them for being imperfect just like you? I'm going to end it here. Till next time, follow me out through my study. Our next study chapter will be on uh, chapter two, confessing our own faults. <laughs> Again, my name is Arthur Pearly Martin. Um, you guys can follow me on Facebook at uh, Rap Time Martin, Pearly Martin Books. And um, till next time, send me an email to Pearly, uh, Pearly Publishing at gmail.com. And we're going to upload some more videos so we can finish our series. How about that? Okay, you guys be blessed and be encouraged. Forgive them for being imperfect just like you.